A very, very good morning. Rabble guide. Small intimate audiences live usually for this. So uh, very, very, you know, grateful to those of you who, uh, who give up your Tuesday mornings. Uh, these guides are proving to be very, very popular. I'm surprised, actually, if, I, if I'm honest with you. But, uh, let's get on with today's guide. Uh, I think I told Lynn off last week, so my apologies, Lynn, but uh, I'm, I'll just... Uh, some ground rules. Uh, this isn't the Sunday night transmission. These are very, very specific guys around how to hold corrupt a corrupt council to account. So you know, if you guys want to gossip about other issues, I'm sure you've got each of us phone numbers, emails whatever, Facebook groups, Twitter, direct messages, uh, and you can do that on, on that, if that's, if that's okay with you all. Okay, so what's today about? We'll go through the freedom of inf some of the freedom information responses, but what I want to start with is the theatre. And as more and more evidence is coming out around the theatre, I think it's, I think it's uh, proving to be interesting have a look at this one okay this is i made reference to it last week but i had realized on sunday night but i'd realized i'd not put the full foi up so this is uh what damon ashworth had actually submitted the public cost of abandoned versions of a replacement coliseum theater i think it's useful for us to use this as a case study uh because it's a very very good foi so the title, you can see straight away, the public cost of abandoned versions of the replacement of, Colos of the Colosseum Theatre, of a Colosseum Theatre. There's no ambiguity there. He wants to know how much it's cost us for the abandoned versions. And then look how specific it is. Look how yeah, targeted his, his words are. And I don't know Damon from uh, Adam, never met the lad. Dear Oldham Metropolitan Borough Council, since 2012... During a time of austerity, Oldham Council has spent considerable amounts of public finances on at least two abandoned versions of a new Coliseum Theatre on Union Street in Oldham Town Centre. See? Straight away, context. First of all, just a little sentence giving a little bit of context. Important. Always important, the context. And then he asked a question. One, how much public money and loans as Oldham Council spent on abandoned versions of a new Coliseum theatre, including the multiple architectural firms procured and replaced infrastructure works, marketing and economy viability studies, promotion events and any spending above £500. So he wants to know how much is spent and any spending above £500. Just to clarify, Oldham Council leader Sean Fielding has been hinting a third version may be offered. I am only requesting the figure for the abandoned versions of the scheme without any breakdown that would allow a OMBC to hide behind commercial sensibility claims. So he's already preempting how Oldham Council will try and avoid giving him a figure, saying if we break it down this way, it's commercial sensitivity, it's data protection. So he's avoided that straight away. Neither do I need the cost of renaming the Oldham Coliseum Theatre as, the, as part of the project to the Coliseum Theatre, which I believe, along with naming the new cultural centre OMA, cost £28,268. So you're clear. We're clear. They renamed the Oldham Coliseum Theatre, rebranded it to the Oldham Coliseum. They got rid of the word theatre. And it cost them £28,268. Fool and his money, hey? A fool and his money. A fool and your money would be more, more to the point. So here we go. You can see, oh, and, and the date's useful. The 30th of October 2019. Bit of to-in and fro-in with the council. The response comes on the 24th of December 2019. So that's not bad. In response to your FOI request, a set out below and the further clarification response is attached. I can confirm that the sums, sums expanded are as follows. Princess Gate, we know about 3.3 million. Remember, Amanda Chatterton recently said it cost nothing. 
and the Coliseum, £3.2 million. So £3.2 million of your money, public money, remember the heading, £3.2 million, was the public cost of the abandoned versions of a replacement Coliseum theatre. That is your money. Gone. Over £3 million. Pounds. Astronomical. Astronomical. Now, what I want to show you. Is this. Hello, I'm Chris Lawson, Artistic Director here at the Oldham Coliseum. And this is a message to say a huge thank you to everyone who has donated to our campaign to get behind us. A couple of months ago, I was sat in the auditorium asking for your help on behalf of the Coliseum, and you did not disappoint. The support that we've received from individuals and businesses has been overwhelming. We hit our original target of £40,000, then surpassed it, and we now have a total of over £50,000. The generosity and care that you've shown to the Coliseum is absolutely wonderful and we appreciate it so very much. What this means is that we can continue to work to welcome you back into the building in 2021, but also importantly that this time next year you hopefully can be sat in these seats watching our panto and you've helped to make that happen. So I'll head back into the writer's room with Fine Time Fontaine to continue working on the script and we hope you will enjoy all the content that we've got in the community and online this Christmas, including our Panto Schools Tour, our Panto Boxers. Sorry, that is my fault. I'll turn the mic back on. Okay, so what you can see going on is they're, uh, they're playing you. What they are doing is, oh, hello, nice to see you. I always like to say hello to my uh, uh, favorite samosa nibbler. Crowd pleaser, how you doing, mate? Any Labour Party politicians you're uh, considering maybe nibbling a samosa with this week? Maybe someone else? I'm only teasing. Okay, so what they've been doing, what these people have been doing is, one, they're playing you with their Save the Coliseum narrative because the way they're promoting, and you've seen it, everything from Maxine Peake's uh, reference to save the Colosseum, to the crowdfunders, to the petitions, they're all playing on the historical Colosseum building. And we all know that this isn't what they want to save, is it? That's not what they want to save. They want to save their jobs. They want to save their, you know, their productions, their underperforming productions and so on. So it's not the historical theatre. It's not the seats that you've sat on. So they're playing you. They're manipulating you. First and foremost. Secondly, what they're doing, and as Chris Lawson made reference to that, and that was during the pandemic, they were trying to raise some money, even though the lottery had given them loads of money, and they were all on on uh, they were all on a whole host of uh, they were all on a whole host of 
government subsidies to keep going. Furlough schemes and art intervention schemes and stuff. They wanted £50,000 off you lot. And they played on it as though it was for the pantomime. You could see that. So these people know and have known from the beginning the way to manipulate you and me is by pushing two key issues. One is the historical Colosseum. And that's why he stood there with the seats behind him. Which they want to get rid of. And the second one. The second one is. The pantomime. Even though the pantomime's on for what? Six weeks? Eight weeks? If that. Of a year. So that's what these guys have been playing you with. And the Arts Council said no recently. So what I want to get to is a couple of freedom of information requests. But before we get to some freedom of information requests, I want to show you some of the finances. And I think my uh, sound is back on. So uh, thank you for those of you who... Uh, You don't need to see my face. Here we go. This is the chart of the total income for the Colosseum. Yeah. 2018, before the pandemic, just over two and a half thousand, two, sorry, two and a half million pounds a year. And now in 2022, 31st of March, 2022, two million pounds a year. You had a dip, but the dip, what I wanted to show you in terms of the income, and here you go. You see, it costs about two and a half million, 2.2 .2 million. To be fair to them, I think on average it costs 2.2 .2 million. Over 2 million pounds a year for the Coliseum to run. Yeah. And if we go here. And I want to show you the most recent annual return. We've done this, but I just want to show it you again. This is the document I want to show you. 2021 and 2022. Agma, Andy Burnham's team, office, funded them just over £100,000. Oldham Council funded them £163,000 in 2021 and increased it to just under £300,000 last year. The Arts Council funded it for £700,000 in 2021 and £615,000. The Cultural Recovery Fund... So they got a net bonus £219,000 and the coronavirus job retention scheme an extra 243000 So they got £500,000, give or take there. And they got money from the Garfield Western Foundation last year for £75,000. So their income through grants was £1.194 million. And the donations and gifts and grants, yeah, was 107000 so they're nowhere near what they need to keep going. It's a £2 million venture. And they're nowhere near. Or well, the rest they get from, you know, they've got from sales. Yeah, so the rest they've got from sales. So they get about £700,000, £800,000 from sales and stuff. But £1.2 million from grants.
This is the web page. Meet the team. In fact, let's do this first. Let's go on the annual report first. Have to bear with me, the web page is running for some reason slowly. I'm not sure why. It's not all my other web pages are running fine. How many of you have been to the Coliseum in the last three years? Before coronavirus or after? Just, you know, I've got 50 of you watching. How many of you have been? See if I can do it on the other one. Okay, I've got that up. There you go. Okay. Yeah, being once when the kids were little. Yeah, exactly, Ronnie. Yeah, it's that, isn't it? It's historical. You take your kids, a bit of nostalgia. Oh, yeah, I know all about low income. Their annual report. Remember, this is an organization. Wow, pantomimes cheaper in Manchester. Wow. The annual report is a key document for organizations looking to attract income. Potential funders, and remember I've had millions and millions of pounds worth of funding in the organizations I've worked with. They always ask for your most recent annual report and it's, it, you showcase your organization with the annual report, how funders trust you, how you do good work, how you can be trusted with money, how you can make a difference. They've got two annual reports on their webpage. One for 2018-19 and the next one for 2019-2020. Where's the one for 2020-21 or 2021-22? Nowhere. It's a bad, bad sign. It's a bad, bad sign to start with when you've not got an up-to-date annual report on your webpage. Then you click meet the team. And what you would do first of all is see who the trustees are. I'm asking, I'm, I'm sharing this like a funder. This is what a funder would do. And when you've not got the photographs of two of, you've only got six trustees. One, two of them you've not got the photograph of. One, you've got half his face missing. It's not looking good, particularly for a theatre company, for a, for a company who are involved in, in the arts. This is pitiful. Okay, maybe not the photograph. Oh, look, not even a biography. Not even a biography about the first trustee on the Barbara Brown Bridge. Let's have a look at the second one. Bridget Egan. Here's a biography. Bridget. I'll bring this up full for you so you can see it. There you go. 
Bridget has recently sold her business, an international consultancy that specialised in accelerated individual team and organisational performance. Bridget is now looking to build a portfolio of interests. Bridget's speciality is in developing transformational and emotionally intelligent leaders and one-to-one coaching. Bridget has loved supporting the Oldham Coliseum over the last 27 years by being an active theatre goer. There's not even a photograph of Bridget. Let's have a look at Sadia Rahman. Title, trustee. No bio. Let's have a look at Sam Alhamdani. Title, trustee, no bio. Oh, you got the rest of his face, though. Let's have a look at Sandy Dixie OBE. Nice. No bio. Let's have a look at Stuart Bromley, trustee. No bio. Five of the six trustees... And this is a live web page. It's not me. Five of the six trustees do not have the bio on their web page. And the two years behind on their annual reports. At least. Yeah, two years behind on the annual reports. Two million pounds they want every year. Can't even get the basics right. Let's have a look at the staff. So forget that. Forget the trustees. Let's have a look at the executive. Now you can see it's got a, it's got a headline that says executive. There's only one person on the executive. A two million pound organization, and there's only one person, and he seems to do want to do everything. Artistic director and chief executive. Let's have a look at his bio. Okay, so he became Artistic Director and Chief Executive in 2022. So he became Artistic Director and Chief Executive just after the last one left, which was November 2022. So he's only been Chief Executive for something like two months or three months. He has directed many of the acclaimed. He has overseen core production most recent production outside of Oldham. Alongside directing productions on the, for the main stage, Chris has launched a number of initiatives and opportunities for theatre makers at the Coliseum. Mate, you're the chief executive of an organisation. Your bio should be about amplifying how you've taken the key competencies that you'd universally expect to see a chief executive have and apply them into the Colosseum. This guy has clearly been given the job because there was no one else there to take the job and he's out of his depth. He has no chief executive experience. So you've got a chief executive without any chief executive experience fronting a £2 million business and five of the six trustees don't even have their biographies online and they're two years behind on the annual reports and they want £2 million. Uh,
let's, I mean, I've just clicked on all now. Okay. I've just clicked on all. Let's have a look. Production manager. So they've gone off. I think they've lined them up by their first names. Yep. Yeah. So they've got things like associate artists, production managers, or back of house, and admin, finance assistant, and so on. So what I would now do is I'd want to see who the finance director is. So I've gone from the trustee and the chief executive. I want to see who controls the money. Who's the finance director? Here she is, Cheryl James. I'd not want to see a photograph of Cheryl James and a dog, if I'm honest with you. If you're looking for money off me and I'm in charge of a grants organisation, that's not the sort of photograph I'd want to see. Oh my God. So the head of finance, when you click on her bio, the way they've set the web page up, you get to see the picture of the dog and half of her face. No biography, no skills or experiences, nothing. All right. Am I still trying? Am I still trying on this? Would you still be trying? Come on. Would you still be trying to give this lot money? There's an finance assistant no biography Adedaya Obikoya okay let's go to the artists the production managers yep yeah. And the learning and engagement officers. Yep. Adam. No bio. Alex Tull. Learning and engagement officer. Key role. Education. Yep. The council give them £300,000 a year and they talk about their role in the community. Come on, Alex. Don't let me down. Alex lets me down. Alex Tall doesn't even have a photograph, never mind a bio. <laughs> Producer, yep. Yeah. You got a producer and a development manager. Yeah. Jamie Walsh. No bio. His chin missing on his photograph. John Edwards. Where is he in a pub? So your development manager is sat in a pub. Yeah. Two million pounds, people. These they want two million pounds. Okay, let's have a look. And I'm not going to pick on the box office assistants and stuff because it's not fair. Let's have a look at the associate artists and we'll go on to them in a moment. But let me start with Afshan D'Souza Lordi, an associate artist without a buyer. Okay, have a look at the associate companies. So these are companies that they pay or companies who have free access to the building and are based there. Yep, that's what these associate theatre companies are. 
Dare to know theatre. No. Fine Comb Theatre. Associate Alumni. No. It's not good, is it? So, if I wanted to still fund this lot, if I wanted to still fund this lot, I start to look at the associates. And the associates, artists and companies. Okay, who, who are they working with? Who's Baster? It's the Oldham Coliseum, 130 years of theatre. I'm sorry, lad. You're being disrespectful to year six students that I've worked with. Year six students that I've worked with did not leave a web page like that. And this is an arts company, by the way. Yeah, it's an arts company. Okay. The first one. Grant Archer. I'll put the screen back up so you can... Grant became an associate of the Coliseum in 2020. So these associates are people who are based there. They sometimes get some money, get, they get the use of the venue and all of that. It's you know, the key positions. I'd expect to see, by the way, the associate artists and the associate companies, the associate alumni to have key links with Oldham. It's the Oldham Coliseum, remember? No. It's been infiltrated by the South Manchester elite. It's what I've been telling you all about. So Grant is not from Oldham. See, in 2021, Grant also received a micro commission from the Coliseum. That means money, as well as being an associate. Yeah. In 2015, he co-founded Take Back Theatre with actor Julie. That's the, the lady out of uh, Coronation Street, isn't it? Okay. Take Back Theatre. Let me press it. Let me show you. Take Back Theatre is a political theatre company. It's a leftist theatre company. I ain't got an issue with him. You can see. And Grant's based in Manchester somewhere, by the way. So he's not from Oldham. Billy Collins, the associate artist. No, not from here either. Dare to Know Theatre. So an associate company. Ooh, they're an Oldham-based theatre company. That'd be interesting for you guys to type in their names and see... Maz Hedgehog. Nah. Afshan de Souza Lodi, Georgetown University. Nah. Associate Artist. Lauren Nicole Mays. Blackpool. Trouble House Theatre.
Bolton way. Okay, so let's have a look at the alumni. We're not winning here, are we, people? Fine comb theatre. And I have nothing against any of these people. I don't know any of them. I don't know these two lovely young ladies. I'm sure they're very, very nice people. I'm looking at that and thinking South Manchester. No, the web page can't be reached. That's not me. Red Bubble Arts. No, they're not from here. You've seen Grant Archer. He's not from here. Hafsa Anila Bashir. She's got something called Outside the Frame Arts. Sirius Speaks. And some pro-Palestinian stuff. Caitlin Gleason. Nana Kofi Kufour. Sarcher McCaffrey. Nah. So what you've got... What you've got is a theatre company that is operationally not fit for purpose. Whose chief executive has been a chief executive for a couple of months in that. The trustees are non-existent and their portfolio of work appears to support almost exclusively people from outside of the town. But you've got your pantomime. You've got your pantomime. And your £3 for a bag of Maltesers. Take back theatre is very, well, you can say it's concerning if you want, mate. It's a political activist organisation. I don't think he even hides it. I've looked at the web pages. I don't think he even hides it. And indeed, Mark, good morning, Mark. Mark is a businessman, he works in the private sector. From a business point of view, absolutely shocking. Clearly, they have never had to identify and develop revenue streams, just relying on free money. Yeah, I think so, Mark. I think so. So that's what you've got with the Oldham Coliseum. And you've all been played. You, me, every one of us has been played. Yet it does get worse and I'll show you how it gets worse you're being mugged again you working class folk you just get played time and time again by a demographic I make reference to as a fake liberal metropolitan elite the two million pounds the vast majority of the money is spent, I'm sure the front of house people, the cleaners, the box office staff, I'm sure they're all from Oldham. I'm sure they're local. But when you get to the serious roles and the productions and the alumni that they support, the associates, the artists that they bring in and pay, the careers they cultivate, they're not our people. But we're paying for them. And now we're crying that they're shutting down what we don't even benefit from. Apart from 
the pantomime. This is one big pantomime, really, isn't it? This is one big pantomime. Let me uh, go and snort some stuff up my nose. <laughs> I couldn't believe when I got that sent yesterday. I don't think she's a well woman. So I'd leave her alone. Let me go and refill my drink. And one of the reasons I'm refilling my drink is because my house is cold. And the one of the reasons I'm sniffing my nose all the time is because my flat is damp. There's nothing I can do about it. It's where I live. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what Amanda Chariton and her regeneration team, Emma Barton, they did. Now, remember, the Arts Council said they want one of their key reservations was to do with the lack of progress on the Oldham Coliseum finding a new home. Well, the council had the chance again after another chance and another chance. And they blew it big time. I'll come back. You listen to this. Have a brew. Oh, please press the like. There's 80 of you watching, so please do press like. If you've not, uh, if you don't subscribe to the channel, please do pr press subscribe. And if you're not uh, a member in any way, please do uh, consider uh, buying me a coffee. There's a link in the description. It's how I keep my lights on because I'm not the Coliseum. Too often, I'll say their face lies. I'll say their face lies. I'll say their face lies. Again, again, again. Their face lies. Too often, I'll say their face lies. I'll say their face lies. I'll say their face lies. Again, again. So right, yeah, we got an agenda. And it's your money we're gonna spend, yeah. Think of where you want to wear it's all gonna hang, yeah. Think of you and 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 Hey, Sean, you got a party? Got that little party going on there. Keep to the left, you can't play right. So everything you do goes wrong. They're aging quite well, those words, aren't they? That's right, we've got an agenda, and it's your money we're going to spend, yeah? Let me try and be a little bit fairer to these people. I brought up the Coliseum 2018-2019 annual report. You can see they're funded by the Arts Council, lottery funded, separate that, so it's lottery funded, Arts Council funded, Greater Manchester Combined Authority and Oldham Council. So 
So in 28, so this is pre-pandemic. So I've didn't, I've done this on purpose. I've, uh, I thought it'd be easier. 2018, 2019, full year. 72,000 people saw a, saw a show at the Coliseum. Thirty-five thousand of those saw the pantomime. Yeah, you see it now. Most successful pantomime ever. Thirty-five thousand people saw Cinderella, and the total viewing figures are seventy-two. So nearly fifty percent of those who visit visit for the pantomime. Why is a theatre company that can hardly keep going doing national tours or playing at 12 venues across the country? How does that benefit ours in our town? We provided, I mean, this is probably the uh, most, uh, I find it bizarre. We provided 160 hours of free research and development space for artists. And that's like something to be proud of. So that 160 hours will have been uh, double counted. So every artist is counted. Every artist, every hour, every artist spends would be counted. What's that, two weeks, maybe? A week? Nah. We welcome two independent theatre companies as our first associate artists. So it's two, these two ladies, Fine Corn Theatre. And Rogue Bones. They're not local. Thirty young people took part in our training program. Thirty worked with over four hundred pupils from fifteen schools. Something like a hundred primary schools in Oldham. Supported three inter-school performances. So three afternoons. And say they went to 15 schools. Let's say they did. And the three, 18. 18 performances in total. They're working with Rochdale. You'll have to ask yourselves why. Thirty six play reading and writing sessions for adults. And they delivered over hundred sessions in community and youth settings across Greater Manchester. Apparently, 36,000 people from Oldham saw a show at the Coliseum. Okay, 36,000 people from Oldham saw a show at the Coliseum. 
I'd wager the vast majority of these 36,000 people who saw us show at the Coliseum did so here via the pantomime. I'd wager that. I'm sorry, it's not good. It's not good at all. So what they did, what the council did, was there was this levelling up money. Huge amount of money. And it was divvied up. You could apply by constituency. So as you know, Oldham actually has three constituencies. Failsworth forms into the Ashton one. So you lose that, but you've got Oldham West and Oldham East. Oldham West and Royton, Oldham East and Saddleworth, completely in the control of the council, they spit. Completely in the control of a woman called... What's her surname? I forget. Anyway, Shamanda Chariton. Yeah, Emma, Emma, Emma whatever. So, what they decided to do was what they decided to do was as Oldham Council they put a bid in for Oldham East and Saddleworth and a bid in as part of Oldham, West and Wrighton. And I'm still trying to figure it, Emma Barton, thank you. What I'm... St and the Oldham, East and Saddleworth bid appears to be this green economy thing. Apparently, Oldham is going to become carbon neutral by 2030. And we're all going to have these cycle lanes and the carbon business stuff, uh, business hub. And of course, northern routes. And the Oldham Western Royton bid was a, mainly around the town centre. And it included the Lyceum and a new home for the Colosseum. and also the library. This got funded, 20 million. This didn't. If you were to consult with Oldhamers, if you were to consult with Oldhamers, what formed this bid would have been This bid here would have been what resonated. They didn't consult with Aldermas. Emma Barton and her team. That's her name. Emma Barton and her team decided to put in two bids and the South Manchester liberal, fake liberal elite are into all of this stuff because all of that stuff is to do with cycle lanes, walking, green technology, eco parks, glamping in Glodic, skinny dipping in the snipe and I'd wager that this bid had more effort put into it than what we as Oldhamers would have valued. This is what they've done. They knew 
And if they didn't know, they should have known. If they didn't know, they should have known that there was no chance the government was going to fund two bids. What they should have done was consulted with the councillors, all 60 of them, consulted with the community and put one bid in. And that bid would have been the Coliseum, the Library, the Lyceum, the old Union Street Centre and bring all of that back to life. The fake liberals, the South Manchester elite, those who have no connection to our town, prioritised glamping in Glodick and skinny dipping in the snipe. And Amanda Chadderton, Barbara Brownridge, Abdul Jabbar, and the cabinet, the rest of the cabinet, all signed it off. You're being played and you're being played and you're being played again. So, in keeping with what of these sessions are about, I'm disappointed last week that's only one person, I think, or two people put in a freedom of information request based upon last week. I think you might want to put some freedom of information requests in. And I'm trying to spoon feed less and less as every week goes by. So I'm going to give you some themes this week and I'll see what transpires at the other end. One of the themes I think you'd be interested in is how much year on year, on year over the last 10 years the council has funded the Coliseum. And based upon what we've seen from the web page of the Coliseum and the mindset of that organisation, I'd want to see year on year, not just what the council had funded the Coliseum, but I'd want to see the funding bids and the end of year reports. Because when you get funded by an organisation, you've got to put a proposal in with a breakdown of what you're going to spend the money on and an end of year report. And if the funder hasn't done that, if the council, who's your funder, hasn't done that, then they've just been giving your money away, haven't they? So I'd want to see a year and year breakdown of how much money the Coliseum has had and a breakdown of the proposal for that money, if there is one. If there isn't a budget of what they plan to spend it on, and if there isn't, well, that tells its own story. And finally, an end of year report for each one. It's not unreasonable. It's common practice. It's basic, basic organisational requirements from a funder. That 3.1, 3.2 million pounds, I think it's reasonable to ask them for a breakdown of it. And I'd also want to see copies of the two bids that went in for the levelling up. One for the Oldham Eastern Saddleworth constituency to see what that bid was. These are public documents, by the way, so they've got to give you those bids. And the failed bid for Oldham West and Wrighton. If I was a councillor for Oldham West and Wrighton, I would be kicking and screaming in the Civic Centre. If I was a councillor for Oldham East and Roy uh, Oldham East and Saddleworth, I'd also be kicking and screaming, wanting to know why I was not consulted on a £20 million bid for skinny dipping on the snipe. But the councillors you have, it's not that they're powerless, they're just puppets, willing puppets, partners in what is transpiring in this town. So please 
let me see what you come up with your, your freedom of information requests. I always keep an eye on the page to see who submits what. But I'd be interested. I think I'd be interested. And when you speak with your friends and your networks, and the majority of this town have been brainwashed about the Colosseum, maybe put your hand on their arm and explain to them what is really going on. Okay, that's me done for the morning. If you find value in these webinars, in these reflective exercises we do, then please consider supporting the channel and buying me a coffee. Maybe I'll see you on Thursday for the next of these sessions and I'll end the, end the transmission, obviously, on, on a Sunday evening. But I'm hoping to be back at some point on Thursday and then again on Sunday. And there's much more, much more to come out of this. It's a con, isn't it? The Colosseum Con. Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them.